Friday. Good morning. Good morning to all and uh, buenos dias a todos. Gracias por uh, estar aquí con nosotros. Appreciate you all spending some time with us this Friday, this Friday morning. Um, if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to please introduce yourself and uh, remind folks who you are, who you're with in uh, in the county. And, um, you know, this is uh, an exciting um, meeting because we're starting on another uh, part of this journey that uh, we, we just wrapped up a really important piece so congratulations and kudos to you all and uh, we now start this, uh, this 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 very exciting catalyst phase of the work so um gracias and, and again welcome um, we are going to take some time now to allow uh up to 15 minutes for uh, some public comment and you know at this time if we what we want to do is if anybody has comments Si alguien gusta ofrecer comentarios uh, del público, again, these are members of the public that are are not affiliated um, as formal members of the collaborative. Ustedes que no son miembros formales de la colaborativa, si tienen comentarios, uh, what we're asking you to do is please raise your hand, levanten la manita virtual para que los reconoce, reconozamos y y identifiquemos y and we can give you some uh, some time. We're going to let uh, we're going to allow for about, you know, two to three minutes tops, uh, depending on how many commentators we have, uh, for folks to provide uh, comments. And again, these are folks that are not part of the collaborative that uh, would like to share some remarks with the rest of you. Um, if you're joining via a desktop or a mobile app, you'll find the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. It's under the, the, the function that says react. It's that tab. Uh, and if you're on the phone, uh, you, what you do is you press star nine, and that'll uh, allow us to identify you. And we will collect all your names. Colectaremos sus nombres. Si están en el teléfono, apachurren la estrella y el número nueve para que los identifiquemos para hacer sus comentarios. And um, and then also, if you're if any of you are need, uh, se ocupan traducción simultánea. Esa función también está disponible. Uh, hay un botón a, a, a lo largo de lo, la parte baja de la pantalla, abajo de la pantalla, donde dice este, desactivar silencio, uh, disculpen, para poder mostrar subtítulos, dice mostrar subtítulos, y ahí es para que les den traducción de tiempo uh, uh, simultánea y también pueden elegir si quieren ver la traducción uh, eligen ver transcripción completa para, para que miren la traducción entonces si tienen uh, si tienen una complicación o, o están batallando para hacer eso hay nomás levanten la mano y también les podemos contestar su pregunta so um, we're gonna so we'll take a we'll take 30 seconds or so or a few seconds to give those of you who want to offer public comment vamos a Darles unos momentos para ustedes que, que gusten ofrecer unos comentarios, uh, que levanten la mano para, para comenzar con la lista, to capture the names on the list, and then we'll turn to each of you in the order that uh, we identify you uh, to um, give you the floor for remarks. So uh, anybody wishing to wake, make uh, public comments, uh, please raise your virtual hand. Uh, levanten la mano para que los reconozcamos. And Jesse, I know you're helping. No, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm monitoring on the attendee side where, yeah, because ma many of you, I mean, everyone on in the panel's view is, is on the collaborative and we have a, we have time for you to comment then. But anyone who's in, in attendee view, please raise your hand. I'm happy to promote you to panelists to kind of make any comments if you have them. I'm looking at the chat. I don't see anybody in the chat. Yeah. Let's give it 15 more seconds and then we can move on to the next item. De nuevo, si gustan hacer comentarios, uh, la función donde dice reacciones, ahí si imprimen ese botón donde está la carita de sonriente, ahí va a haber una función que dice levantar mano, raise hand, y uh, si impresionan ahí esa, esa función, va a levantar su mano virtual y los podemos ver para ver si quieren hacer un comentario. All right, seeing none, I think we can move on to the uh, next agenda item. Great, thank you, Jesse. Uh, well, yeah, this is now your all opportunity to offer some 
comments. So if there's anything that any of you as collaborative members want to share with uh, your peers here about uh, the California Jobs First process, uh, where we've been, where we're at now, and um, you know this is the moment to do. I do see one, one hand that went up. Uh, Orange County Grant Makers, I'm assuming that is OCG. Hi everyone. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out. Maria presented yesterday at our OCG summit about Catalyst, and she did fantastic. And there was so much interest from nonprofits, um, and people are really excited. So really great feedback. Um, just about the initiative and the engagement from the community and everyone. Excellent. Thank you so much. And well, kudos to you, Maria, for taking the time to um, offer, offer that contribution to um, one of the sectors in your community. Um, anything you want to add, Maria, with those comments or anything that any of you want to add? I mean, I'll say um, I think it helped so much to feel so welcome into the space and and everybody's so warm. And um, I did receive a few emails and LinkedIn messages. Uh, people gave me their cards. And so I asked people to please connect because I will be posting and we'll get to that later in the agenda. But I will be posting the survey everywhere. Um, and so people are excited. Yeah, I'm like, just apply. It doesn't matter if you think you don't qualify, just reach out to us. Excellent. Thank you, Maria. Would anyone else like to offer any any updates, uh, any upcoming events or efforts that are getting underway in Orange County that you want to share with your peers? Or any comments or questions or feedback or commentary you're hearing about Catalyst uh, uh, in the community or questions that are surfacing about this next phase that maybe you want to address with the whole group here? And then we're, we'll have ample time to jump in and do a deeper dive, but maybe we can uh, give you all a chance to maybe ask something really quick here. Kathy, I see you came off me. Go ahead. Hi, Ash. Um, thank you. Uh, just, I think you're going to be getting a flyer uh, in the near future here, but we are going to do something, another event for the region where we're inviting people from this collaborative, as well as like the Orange County Workforce Development Board, and really anybody in Orange County. Um, to join in on understanding what projects already exist in Orange County from the K-16 grant that was given a few years ago. There's a lot of organizations, both educational and other, involved in some projects, and it might be valuable to build on some of the existing projects based on everyone on this call and what you're thinking of applying for um, in future project funding. So I'll invite you to the event. It'll be an evening event, and um, it'll be at Orange Coast College, and it's really open to anybody in the public who wants to understand if they want to just take a lighter lift and join in and get funding through a collaborative with some other entities, um, not just on your own. So thanks for that, Ish, and then we'll get flyers out soon to you guys. Great. Thanks so much, Kathy. So everybody keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks and um, great opportunity to uh, lean in a little deeper on another part of this work. Uh, ¿Alguien gusta hacer un comentario? Estamos aquí en la, en la porción de la agenda donde Ustedes pueden ofrecer información de eventos que tal vez uh, estén a la vuelta, que quieran invitar a sus colegas, o novedades sobre programas que están ocurriendo, iniciativas que están lanzando en el condado de Orange. Um, con toda confianza, si gustan compartir algo, este es el momento. Anyone else wishing to share any, any, any comments with your peers? Um, Ish, actually, I did want to elevate one thing real, real quick. Um, Annie reached out to me and um, had asked if I could share an event with the collaborative. I haven't sent it in an email, so I figured I could just use this space. So Cal State Fullerton Office of Government and Community Relations is inviting the collaborative um, and you know, other folks in the community to their third annual energy and sustainability summit. It's pretty incredible. Um, it's Monday, October 21st from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The EV Expo will be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in parking lot R. Um, so if you are interested, it'll be in the Titan Student Union. Reach out to me and I'll forward you the email. Great. Thank you, Maria, for mm -hmm. relaying that invitation from... Um... One of your one of your peers here in the group. Okay, we'll do a final call. Anything else anybody wants to share? Ultima llamada para compartir algo. Jay, I see you came off. Yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, did she say 10 p.m. to 12 p.m.? 
Um, no, usually I'm asleep by then. No. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's what and... the, the, those, that time doesn't work. That's a 14 hour span. Um, it's uh, 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So, um, and then the EV Expo is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in parking lot R. So I'd say just be there at 9. You'd be out of there by 1 p.m. And it is Monday, October 21st. Okay. All right. If you can send that to me, I'd appreciate it. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye. You're welcome. Great. Thank you, Maria. Okay, well, I, I am not seeing any other hands or any other interest to share anything, so we will move in to our fourth agenda item, and this is just an opportunity for uh, a couple of us to provide some insight, uh, relay some information about um, our participation in this week's California Economic Summit. It was really great to see several of you there, you know, Kathy and uh, Tony and Maria and Jesse and there may have been others of you that I didn't get an opportunity to stop and say hello, but um, I, I, you know, was part of the staff team running around making sure that we were offering our best uh, hospitality possible for you all. And I really hope that you all had a, a meaningful participation in Sacramento this past week. Um, I wanted to just offer a couple um, uh, sharing uh, learnings or or uh, highlight a couple things that were. Um, you know, surface during the course of the two and a half days we were there and then invite others to do the same, uh, Tony, Kathy, Maria, Jesse, and others of you who were there. And, and I just want to say thank you for those of you who were there on behalf of this collaborative, on behalf of Orange County for uh, taking the time to, out of your week to to join us up there and make sure that Orange County was represented uh, and represented well um, uh, at our, our, our statewide event. So thank you so much. But um, you know, just a couple of uh, really quick uh, sound bites on on the event. Um, obviously, you know, conferences like this cover uh, try to cover a lot of ground and um, you know hit the tip of the iceberg. We don't do a super deep dive, but we do offer an opportunity for folks to learn about some of the issues that are most pertinent to California Forward that we are looking to uh, lean into further during the course of the year with partners. And so it's almost always described the summit as a train station for you to hop on or hop off some of the work that we're working on. But uh, but there was a lot of um, in on the plenary stage and in the breakout sessions and the, the associated events, uh, opportunities for folks to learn about uh, this regional economic development um, work that's being done throughout the state of California. We, you know, we had Governor Newsom with us on um, Wednesday afternoon, and he spoke a lot about this and highlighted some of the regions that are really um, uh, have taken this opportunity with the billions of dollars of investments that have come, not just with this program, but uh, other ancillary programs in K through 16, climate collaboratives, um, high road training partnerships, all sort of moving in the same direction towards um, state investment around economic and work workforce development to position the state of California to uh, really be um, in, a, in, in, a, in a situation where it can exercise its resili resiliency, it can exercise its sustainability with uh, some of the 21st century challenges that we're being confronted with around um, you know, global supply chains, um, global pandemics, um, you know, international, you know, uh, conflicts that we're having and how that all affects our local economies as well. Um, climate resiliency, natural disasters, and how we can adapt and uh, mitigate those things. And you know, we're seeing a lot of that these last few weeks on the East Coast. Um, and then just making sure that there's more opportunity that's spread across uh, more Californians, and especially in, you know, in, in our case here in Orange County. So, so a lot, lot offered on stage there by by the governor, but also other leaders. Uh, certainly, our CEO Kate Gordon had a lot to say about this work as well. Uh, and then we had several breakout sessions that did a little bit deeper dive into some of these areas uh, that so many of you care about, whether it be manufacturing, broadband, and other topics. Uh, there was uh, no shortage of opportunities to plug in and meet peers around the state who are doing comparable work. And um, many of you had the opportunity to share those best practices, share the resources, exchange cards. And so uh, that was really great to see people in, in uh, in-person community doing all of that. Uh, and then really quickly, um, 
there was a uh, several several of you had uh, the opportunity to represent Orange County in um, an, what we called an investor exchange, where all 13 regions that are doing California Jobs First work um, had an opportunity to hear from a perspective, a panel of prospective investors that were there, uh, philanthropy, federal government, state government, to uh, hear about your projects, uh, come over to your poster board, uh, learn about your enabling uh, sectors, your your um, your industry priorities, and and see where there was an opportunity to continue conversations and be able to start doing some matchmaking with um, the planning process that you all just completed, um, you know, um, recently with your, your regional plan and the implementation phase. And so that was exciting. There was a full house uh, yesterday afternoon to see uh, your peers from across the state engaging in those discussions and and uh, in starting to cultivate some of that matchmaking around implementation dollars. So um, really high level superficial um, overview for me. Um, I'd love to invite um, you know uh, Kathy, Maria, Jesse, uh, Tony. Um, uh, and those are the those are the, the folks from this group that I actually had a chance to say hello to and, and spot in the crowd. There might have been others of you that I um, didn't get a chance to come say hello. And for that, I apologize. I was running around like a chicken. Uh, but um, but I want to turn it over to you all to share your comments and, and, and you know, what you harvested from the event this week and um, what you'd like to bring back to this group here today, this morning. And maybe some things to look forward to in the next coming weeks and months. And Jesse, yeah. maybe you want to kick us off for Maria? Yeah, yeah. Um, we also had Natalie there. Um, we had Charitable Ventures present. Um, and I was honestly ish really impressed. I wasn't sure what to expect um, because I'd never been there. That was my first time. So um, I think my favorite part of it was the the reception um, on Tuesday where we got to try different food that is sustainable, some of it vegetarian, um, and just the way that the chefs were so innovative. Um, the competition, that was really fun. Um, obviously anytime there's free food on there. Um, <laughs> and I'll defer to to Kathy or Jesse or anybody else that wants to add anything. Yeah, it was great to see Natalie in Charitable Ventures there too, and I uh, did have a chance to say hi to Natalie, so I was blanking on that, but thank you, Maria. All right, Tony, I see your hand is up. Or Kathy, you're off mute, and we'll start with you, Kathy, and then, Tony, we can turn to you if that's okay. Go ahead. I'll be quick, Tony. Um, I just have to say, this was my first economic summit as well. Uh, ish, great job of the entire staff. I was very, um, I left very, uh, a bit overwhelmed, to be honest with you because I have never learned so much in such a short amount of time about other industries that I don't know that very much about, like transportation, um, electrifying, the, the whole grid, everything. So I would say the takeaway I have was this effort to talk about sustainable economic practices in alignment with um, education, in alignment with uh, workforce development, and um, I guess the importance of all of us working together and really breaking down the silos one of the speakers said something about, they put two maps up on a slide and he was talking about how he was a little boy and he loved maps and atlases. And then the first time he got up in a plane, which was eight years old, he looked down from the plane on the land and he's like, mom, where are all the lines? Because on the maps and the atlases, there's lines for geog geographical regions. And she goes, oh, those are just, you know, fictional. Those are made up. Those are by humans. Like, so he's like, oh, and I thought it was a really good story for us today because I'm like, that is so true. Like we break into our silos for discussion purposes because of the lines that have been drawn by different organizations, by society, just by the way we have to do it to make life make sense. But um, I, I hope that moving forward in these efforts, especially in Orange County, because we have such a strong movement going, that we can kind of erase the lines a little bit. Um, because I think we're all here for the same reasons to really make more opportunities happen for our citizens um, and our residents. So anyway, I, I love that. Thank you for the invite. I will be going back in future years and it's a valuable conference to attend if you have it done. Back to you, Tony. Well, it's hard to go after such an eloquent <laughs> explanation. Mine's kind of pedestrian. Um, I, I, I've been to a number of summits. I really see it as a, a highlight 
for of the year. It's a place where I get to engage with stakeholders that I don't normally engage with. And I think the summit's kind of represented that to me for a long time. Um, I, I really appreciated going into um, community benefit agreements, and I have really felt like the case studies that were brought forward this time were so practical. And um, I first, I have to tell you, I'm from Sacramento. That's right. I'm not from here. This is where I live. I was not going to listen to the Aggie Square um, panel because it has been very controversial here. Mm -hmm. And I was sick and tired of listening to the university say how great it was when there was so much opposition. I was like, oh, I've heard it all. I thought the panel really brought forward, one, the pick of the people, the discussion of what community actually received, how long it took to do. I mean, I, I learned a lot. And it, as I said, it's about something that's in the news and I live here. So I, I really appreciated that. The other um, piece that I thought maybe for future meetings, um, two, two things. One is an information item, and I don't mean like next month, but um, I know that the governor has been um, holding internal uh, California Jobs First uh, meetings with his uh, secretaries, et cetera, but it really isn't very transparent. And so I would love for us to try to figure out a way to... Uh, I don't know if somewhere the agendas are listed. Maybe it's after the meeting. I really, I'm really not really quite sure. But they are going to be both doing internal coordination for state programs, but also guiding the development of the state plan, as, as Ish was talking about, that's going to be the integration of these uh, four plans, one of which is we're involved in. So I just thought, is there a way for us to <laughs> track it? So that's a, a question. And then the other thing is I thought maybe we should in an intentional way, and again, I don't mean next month, but in an intentional way, look at those four plans in Orange County um, in the way of how do they now relate to our plan? So I know that we, we've had great representation from the K-16 Collaborative, but maybe we need to now say, okay, what, where are you and what do we have? And how do they fit together? And then, of course, the same with a career tech, et cetera. Great. Thank you, Tony and, and Kathy Boyd, for uh, for those uh, great report backs to the group on, on your experience this week. Uh, I, I don't see Natalie here, but if, uh, if there's anyone else from the collaborative uh, that was there with us this past week, I certainly would love to uh, hear, hear from you all and have you all uh, share what you gathered from the experience with your peers. Otherwise, uh, Jesse and Maria, I'll let you have maybe final comments on this item. I provided my comments already. Thank you, though. Yeah, and as I would say, the only two highlights uh, that haven't been added are, you know, they did, we, you'd have um, the director of the governor's office of business economic development, and then the, uh, this, or, and then the secretary of labor and workforce development. And they really just talked about that kind of they understand the commitment and the sustainability of this program that hopefully in two years, it just doesn't all go away. And so they're thinking about intentionally. I think that was really a meaningful statement um, to know that, I mean, those people at the at really at the highest levels are trying to drive this to, to maintain it. Um, kind of as Tony said, you know, just so you know, there's some swapping. There was someone at the who was at GoBiz, went to the Labor Workforce Development Agency, now back at GoBiz. Someone from GoBiz is now running the California kind of like workforce board. And so you're going to really see the, the, the alignment and the coming together because the personnel were there and trying to bring all the things that the workforce board is doing versus all the things that the labor agency was doing with GoBiz and vice versa. So um, you're going to see a lot more coordination on that front. And then on the, uh, the investor exchange, the one thing to note is, um, as people, as we start thinking about projects, really, you know, not all funding is going to be grants, if you think about having strong projects. And they really talk about from all the different investors, like how much, you know, they want a return on their investment. And so I think, you know, as, as all of you as collaborators are deliberating, as we get to that point about what strong projects are, and, and if those are in the proposals, just thinking about kind of how people are adding up all the dollars, they, the term is capital stack, but really adding up all these different sources of dollars, and that not all of those sources will be 
essentially just just grants and that there are other sources out there and we have to think about the sustainability of projects how is it generating revenue in order to kind of pay back some of those loans so just something to think about when all of you are you know considering and deliberating on the projects as well that's great jesse and that's a great takeaway as well that uh, you know these projects are going to require not putting all your eggs in one basket but really looking across different funding streams and both public and private uh, we had, I think, a representative or two from venture, venture capitalist firms, for example, that were there to offer their comments on, like, here's what we're looking for, and here are questions we have for all of you. And there was a couple of uh, guinea pig regions that volunteered to uh, do uh, these practice pitches uh, to the investor panel well, with everybody else in attendance and provided, um, uh, I think, the other regions an opportunity of, of uh, a template that they could be using to uh, prepare those responses to questions that investors will have about uh, the projects that you'll be elevating for um, the funding. Linda, you had a question. I see you came off mute. I, I do. Uh, it's not so much a question as it is just a comment, though, just to remind uh, the collaborative that what you've just described, Ish, uh, is one of the core specialties of Octane OC and the Octane's nonprofit accelerator. So that's one of the things that we do, which is prepare. We, you know, the, we have a very rigorous methodology that we work with our commercial companies and with our nonprofits uh, to help position them uh, better for uh, serious investment. So we can help with that as well. Excellent. Well, that's 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 exactly the the purpose of this collaborative is for you all to lean on each other and open up doors and opportunities where you see them to uh, advance and support what you're all building here together and what you're elevating for uh, for resourcing on on implementation. So uh, definitely keep those those resources that Octane offers in, in mind as you advance with, with this work. Jesse, I'm gonna turn it over to you now because you have a heavy dose of information uh, this morning. You're gonna actually walk us through agenda items uh, five through eight. Um, and so we're gonna turn it over to you to uh, sort of give us the meat and potatoes of what to expect in the coming months. So Sorry. let's let's turn it over to you. Share the screen. Give me a moment. And while Jesse does that, any questions from anybody else uh, based on what you just heard from um, you know the summit conversations that took place? Preguntas que tengan algunos de ustedes sobre los comentarios que se acaban de ofrecer. Uh, tocante el evento que ocurrió esta semana en Sacramento. Preguntas o comentarios. Okay. okay. Well, Jesse, when you're ready, yeah. floor is yours. It's up. Apologies while it loads. So, yeah, the, the agenda topic. We uh, completed the planning. Kudos to all of you for all that hard work. And now we've started the very first meeting of Catalyst. Um, so I kind of want to just make sure that we're reset, understand kind of what's ahead of us. Um, think about um, if, if there should be a better meeting process and logistics, we're happy to incorporate those. Now is, is the best time to kind of reset and think about um, how best to proceed moving forward. So uh, one thing that has come up from the state uh, is that they would like an investment playbook. You'll see here, and we're going to pull it up later, but you'll see it kind of hyperlinked. There is one in San Bernardino that the state has kind of looked at as a model uh, that they would, again, they, they will have more guidance, but for now, they think that investment playbook is something to model after. They'd like some draft of this uh, by early, Jan early by January of next year with the final deliverable of June, 2025. Uh, I, I, we want to wait for that initial guidance for all of you to see and, and we can discuss. I am curious how these deliverables line up with how they think regions are going to select projects and deploy capital, both when it comes to implementation and catalyst. But again, wait to see. The purpose of the playbook, I know most of my slides are wordy, but the whole point is I want you to take these and save these as notes. Uh, so I don't kind of want anything list, uh, missed. But um you know, the state wants to know what the priority projects are so they can think about, as Tony talked about, how should they position themselves? 
how much funding should they be allocating budgetarily to some of these things instead of just guessing what the demand is look at these reports and say there's a there's a significant demand in this type of thing so maybe we should have significant funding here instead of funding something that goes undersubscribed in another area so it's one is just like our reports it's very informative to the state to know what's happening in its in, in the regions of the state and then it's also for the region to be able to have this playbook to talk to investors and funders and say you know this collaborative has said here are our priorities you know what kind of funding can you bring to the table so that's its dual purpose again more to come but know that we're going to be marching towards this uh pretty immediately uh, especially once we get that guidelines just see a, a question in the chat yeah. um, sure if this, uh, this report is meant to be virtual or electronic online or a hard copy paper or both uh, i think they've mostly been comfortable with electronic pdf versions um so again i mean if you if you'll see the other one and because we were going to get to it that this hyperlink is a is actually is also a website it's more of a website than it is a physical pdf so that's could be one form that we can choose to use if we do the pdf it can be on the jobs first website and i'm sure that the state um, we'll also, the, the state has a new website around Jobs First, and I'm sure they're going to post it there, which is where our regional reports are now posted. I think another hand came up. Yeah, we have Linda with the with the question. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesse, um, sorry, because I, I mean, I read this. I read this material before today, but I'm still not. Okay. A draft deliverable will be due on January 15. A mm -hmm. draft of an investment playbook. That is that is all we know now, correct? Okay. An investment playbook. And there is a template that they're suggesting that the, we might want to employ, but we don't have it yet. Yeah, yes, yes, that's a fair way to say. So it, you said this this investment playbook that's hyperlinked. I have another slide where I think we're going to look through look at the website to give people a sense of what's in it, but that is what they've indicated so far is something mm -hmm. to model after, but it is not the definitive guidance. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to go for clarity here is mm -hmm. is the is the playbook is the playbook a format for how we get to point A to B or is it a collection of projects? See, that's what I because the, 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 the deadlines ladder. are not. That's no that that's, that's, that's been that's my question is I don't know how this is going to line up with just us selecting projects and deploying, but ultimately it is the it is a composition of all or a compilation of all the projects this collaborative wants to focus on both implementation and ca and like pre-development and and that'll be the document you know the the document that we kind of will send to the state but also utilize to try to get investment for so it's still yeah so sometime between now and january i mean we have to everybody's got to apply now that's where again i i want the guidance from the state because i don't see how these how this makes sense Honestly, like right, I'm, I'll be, so I'm gonna I want to okay. wait before I judge, but okay. that's where ultimately it's a it's a draft. So if you could see between January and June, I'm sure significant changes can be made. I just want I'm just letting you know this is what we're supposed to be marching for, towards so far, but they do need to provide greater clarity. And I've talked to other regions. I don't see why this is necessary now, um, and I think it kind of gets in the way of us again, uh, reviewing projects um, and uh, submitting them. Uh, Yes, I'll take other questions because I think we have other other things that might add to that answer later, Linda. But I want to take other questions. We have a question from Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah, um, good morning. So just before we move ahead, I think um, I wanted to, to confirm that I understand. You're mentioning we're doing a shift into Catalyst and that the state has our regional plans already on a website. Um, but I also was checking with you all about, you know, our opportunity to give any final feedback. And I think you replied, we will look at it once more. So could you just clarify Great. that? Yeah. So that'll be an agenda item for the next meeting where, uh, as I said, like it's, it's a living document. So we would like to receive that feedback for the collaborative to determine whether they want to incorporate it. Similar to the regional plan part one, right? We had drafts, people had suggestions on topics, the research did the, uh, the researchers did the analysis and we showed it to you before we incorporated it. We will do the same thing. We will then, you know, if it's adopted by the collaborative, we can update it on our website and then we will send it to the state notifying them that this is the updated version. I can't guarantee that the state will take it. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, I can't guarantee that, but we will say, hey, the region made an update. Can you now update your website? Got it. Thank you. No problem. So yeah, we so we'll make that announcement too, Marie. Uh, sorry, Anna. 
and we will have it in the recap email about if people have that, please provide it preceding that meeting so people have time to review them so we can vote on it. Any other questions about this slide? I do have a, there is a question in the chat uh, along the lines of Anna's comments. We have a comment from Luis. I invite you to come off mute if you wish to um, elaborate a little bit further. But uh, Luis is sharing that he had suggested a, um, a, or maybe a Google form that can be filled out to give a sense of what sort of projects might be um, algebra or, or aligned with this funding and uh, want to see if there was any consideration to that. Yeah. So that, that Luis, that is done. Maria will review that with you uh, all uh, in a later part of the agenda. And our hope is to get that out early next week. So this collaborative has a sweep of those projects as we come into the next meeting in December. Um, you guys, it, it can kind of inform you to make sure that we have uh, our, your framework or your criteria, whatever you want to call it, in place based on that information. And I just want to quickly note too that in the chat, a couple of you have dropped some uh, helpful resources. Uh, there's a link to the example San Bernardino playbook. Okay, yeah, um, thanks. So thank you for that. And then Maria dropped a link to uh, the website from the Labor Department on where uh, the plans live. So yeah, thank you. And again, hyperlinked here. So if you guys have the deck, you could, you know, or save the link now or hyperlinked here so you can get to it later if you want more time to review it. So implementation, from what we know now, it's supposed to be released in January. Um, well, okay, all of this is from what we know now. Released in January, approximately $45 million will be available, but it's comp it is competitive statewide and it's over three years. So each year they'll open another round of funding. Um, these projects need to be implementation ready, which is different than Catalyst, which is pre-development work uh, to get kind of projects to be implementation ready. Um, however, as I mentioned, you know, this, um, this, your body, this body has to approve it at the regional level, whether it be a letter of support or, or some other documentation for the state to even consider it um, at the state level. And again, just because we approve it doesn't mean it's going to get funded because all the other collaborators are doing the same. So now that is coming, hence why, Luis, to your point, a sweep of those. And in the survey, we can have people select whether it's an implementation and a catalyst project. So then you guys can look at it in two separate buckets, right? So what are the implementation ones? Just saying we kind of have to move towards this deadline until we get clarity on whether it's going to get pushed back. It'll be no sooner than January. Right now, that's what the state's aiming for. But we'll see how where other regions are and whether and how the state if, if the state needs to get it out so quickly. So wait to see there. But that's coming on the implementation phase side. A big part of this work will be the sector investment coordinators. We'll have them all ready and kind of contracted for you by the December meeting. But just really want to go over what their roles are. There will be some committed to outreach and engagement in the community. Um, as we think about kind of the catalyst funding that's available, you want to be able to support support the applicants and making sure they understand you know, what, what are eligible activities and projects. Um, they will help us if we need to determine what's exploratory and last mile. Um, and then they will also kind of provide recommendations on which activities should receive funding. But ultimately, just like I think that's a staff recommendation, it's going to be your call. But a lot of these people kind of do this work day in and day out. So they might have, again, their judgment, their recommendations is something that should be taken seriously. They will coordinate with staff and, and regional st uh, staff to try to see, again, how can we Pull different for source, different sources of funding together. In a place like Orange County, nine million for those pre-development activities is wonderful, but it's not significant enough for us to kind of have this transformational change. And the same thing on the implementation side, $45 million each. We want to have grant writing consultation, try to help people write those grants, or at least provide advice on how to improve them when we think about these different pots of money. And when you think about potentially there could be federal projects that could get pulled down for this. Uh, we also want to track the project uh, the progress particularly of the implementation funds and maybe some of the er earlier catalyst funds that might get released on how they're doing. Because we, we want to fund it, but we also want to follow up. Um, and then we want to assist the, the this collaborative coalition um, in potentially submitting comments if the state releases some sort of draft RFP before implementation goes out. They don't, they have not answered that question on whether they're going to release a draft RFP open for public comment. Um, so if that happens, then we can look to the sector investment coordinators to help us draft those and submit those. Big That's thing longer term is we wanna build ecosystems. I know Tony has a question, but let me just finish these slides. Build an ecosystem around the, the priority industry sectors uh, or, or, or industry, industries or sectors. So they'll be doing that. Like what are the pieces to have a, a strong ecosystem here in Orange County? Um, again, connect perspective 
or funded pre-development activities to other similar initiatives. Kathy was already talking about how she has one. Tony talked about the four plans that are happening and how they can kind of get woven together. So they're going to help, you know, um, mobilize that. Um, ultimately, we want to grow the priority, uh, the industry's prioritizing in the planning phase. However, they can assist there and provide technical assistance to the pre-development activities. And then lastly, you know, address all the strategy in the regional plan. Because if you think about the regional investment initiative or this, these catalyst dollars, um, they're very focused on economic development, workforce development with environmental sustainability. But we also put stuff like uplift community. We also have stuff like housing in the strategies, which are kind of community development strategies. That is still going to be within their purview to try to execute those. So it's not as if we're only focused on the three or four things that are focused on high quality jobs and business business growth. So they will be addressing all the really eight top line strategies and the other things in the regional plan part two to try to move us forward in that regard as well. So with that, I know Tony has a question or Tony has a hand raised to add a comment. Any other questions uh, before we kind of start thinking ahead? I just wanted to make sure we reset. This is what's gonna be kind of in front of us to what degree, um, but yeah, any questions about what's been presented so far? Yeah, we have a question in the chat after Tony's uh, completed. Sure. Comments. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, I had, a, I had a suggestion. Maybe we should start to pull together a FAQ that's on the website um, that ha both goes through the definitions of things that we have, mm -hmm. but okay. also um, I really like these slides because I think this is a question that's going to come up a lot, like what's the role of a sector investment coordinator or is anybody doing X? You know, it's like, yes, we have somebody. So I'm just thinking a, a prominent place that we can be saying, you know, this is what we already know. That of course, there's things we don't know, but this is what we do know. Um, and and the other piece I wanted to say, and I know the state is not describing it this way, but I think our RFP may have the when the projects come in, the one piece that they keep only looking at catalyst, I would think that when the applications came through, if there were projects that were close to implementation or mm -hmm. at implementation, we should be sorting everything, you know, like let's hear everything and then sort it out. Um, so I was just thinking in going forward that if there was a project that came in and it was farther along than would be eligible for Catalyst, let's put that, let's not lose it. Let's not act like, oh, you didn't apply right. Let's create a bucket for those and, and use that in our advertising. Okay, absolutely. And then in, in the survey, we'll go through it. We, again, we asked that question so we can sort it after. So we're not saying, oh, if, you, if you're not Catalyst, then please don't apply. Right. Um, and and then in the in the kind of the blast that goes in that same thing, we're going to describe implementation and catalyst in the same blast because then it would just be too confusing. I think if we sent it out, two separate funding sources. Exactly. Similar. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just just submit and we'll we'll sort after. Absolutely. Great. And uh, question on the. <clears throat> okay. Great. Look, Yosef, I had a question about um, the language, the like, you know what we mean by pre-development, like giving some criteria about what that is, but. Uh, he just dropped in the chat that Tony's comments helped address his question. Mm -hmm. And we 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 link uh, and and again, I think maybe we could think about whether it could be done uh, in more lay people's terms. But we will link Yosefa kind of all the different things that the state has laid out as, as they think qualify. And there are some slides here about a little bit of some examples of what those could be. Uh, but but th that other document is is more comprehensive. And to Tony's point in the chat, also also doing that in um, several of the languages that are spoken in the county so that yeah absolutely we have that inclusivity element covered great jesse well let's march on oh quick question from linda yeah, yeah just a quick remark i i just want to second that jesse what you said um you know i mean i i have no reservation at all about saying that you know the government ease and the language um that we have been using throughout this entire process uh, is not easy to wrap mm. your head around. And if it's not easy for some of us that sort of swim in that pool, mm. uh, so we really need to find a way to make this accessible. Mm. Um, so that how we interpret and translate it, I think is going to be important to the quality uh, and also the coalitions uh, that are built. All right, thank you for that input. I see no so, other questions in the yeah. chat. To, go ahead, Justin. So just to, just to lay it out, I, uh, you know, I, I, this these are important decisions, but I would say like I think a lot of the heavier lifting has been done 
a kind of establishing uh, again that that report and everything that had go in and we were trying to figure out what we what we were doing and and there was a lot of pivoting from the state. So just know from a meeting perspective, you know, we 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 don't want to meet as frequently. We don't think we have to meet as frequently, especially as we really get rolling here, because it should be mostly about kind of the projects and a discussion about what we saw were strong projects or not and what should get funded or not. So we will meet bi-monthly. I, I think getting an understanding from the state uh, on those deliverables a little bit more, given those timelines, will determine how long that has to be. But then we will kind of move into quarterly. Uh, I, I appreciate everyone's commitment to this. Uh, this is a unique collaborative, but I also know that there are collaboratives more specific to the work you're doing, like as Catholic education as a K through 16 collaborative, there's career tech ed collaboratives. There's a lot of collaboratives in Orange County, which we're very fortunate to have. So we also don't want to be just like kind of another meeting you feel like you have to go to and they have to make sure that they're more agenda packed and meaningful. So we will uh, space these out a bit, give everyone some more breathing room. But I just want to check in like these have been Friday morning at 830. It seems like attendance has been good. But I know, again, like Ish was two minutes late because he has to drop off his kids. Uh, but I, I also know that maybe too much into the day, it starts eating up, you know, your day job. Just curious if there's any feedback on do Friday morning meetings work is 90 minutes. Okay. Too long, too short. And just any feedback so we can kind of change the calendar up to make sure that these are again, as impactful and as convenient uh, for all of you as possible. So again, no better time to reset and ask these questions than now before we embark upon this process for the next two years. Any thoughts? from the collaborative. Do we like what we're doing? We have a good setup or do things need to get shifted around for convenience and access? Folks are, folks are confirming that the time on Friday mornings has been really good and okay. yeah. um, getting pretty good consensus on that. Kath, uh, Kate, you want to add to that? Oh, just, I was, you hadn't had a chance to read. Yes. It's Friday. Fridays are the lightest day for meetings, yeah. at least for me. So it's perfect whether it's 60 or 90 or you schedule for 90, but make it the shorter. Agenda yeah. is 60. I, you know, that, that, that's a little less, but I, I please keep Friday mornings. Okay. <laughs> I, I, one, if one I could jump in big Jesse Fridays, uh, Fridays, I kind of get like eight, six, um, an hour would be better, but that's okay. I'm here. So okay. thank you. Okay. I do see one person um, suggesting perhaps maybe 9 a.m. would be easier just for, on that point for them uh, on on um, school drop offs. And then I'm seeing several suggestions suggestions here for 60 minute meetings instead okay. of the 90 uh, to, to Kate's point. But um, I hope that's helpful, Jesse. Yeah. And then I think we're, we'll, we'll send a survey out, but we want to I just want to get a, a flavor of it. But again, I don't think there's ever going to be a perfect time for everybody. Mm -hmm. But let's get, I just want to see what the general consensus is. Again, as we think about the next meeting, I want to make sure we get those right and schedule them in advance so they're on your calendar. I think there was another, Marshall, hand might have been raised or comment. I don't see a raised hand, but oh. several uh, confirmations okay. coming in for 9 a.m. Okay. For 60 minutes. Okay. So guy, we're, we're mostly on the right track here. So good to know. So as, as we kind of move forward. Um, so what, uh, you know, as we start thinking about those projects as they start coming in again, what, like what, our uh, th activities that we could fund. Um, so this is again from the state, they did provide some examples here. So if we think about non-construction projects from, pre from a pre-development perspective about permitting and land use, it, it can be kind of obvious, uh, not obvious, it's not obvious, but it, it's more clear what those uh, pre-development activities could be. So again, I, I'm not gonna go through these, but they're here. So if you think about if you have a workforce de uh, a workforce development program, you uh, eventually wanna launch, but that would be implementation ready. Like what would be a pre-development activity that could qualify under Catalyst? So here are some examples. If any of you have thought about doing those things or doing these things that we see in the community, these are the things some of the state put a little bit more, again, other than just a list of things, I think it's, it's a little bit more clear, like, oh yeah, I, I could see how uh, we could be doing something in these bullet points here. So comprehensive needs assessment, recruitment strategies, developing the curriculum. Uh, so these are all, all options and the, the slides are here. I wanna move forward. I just kind of have it in writing for the sake of time. Here's an example of a digital cooperative platform and what that could be. So if it's not workforce related, again, it's writing the business plan, which is like critical. Do you have the contacts for the people who would even use the platform? Do you have their buy-in? Um, even developing the prototype itself if it's a physical and uh, a physical thing in that sense um, or i guess in this case digital could be something that could be funded so again i think these are yosef hopefully these to your point of like what does this actually mean it could be things like this 
And then a revolving loan fund is something that has been talked about. Uh, so we'd have to assess which ones are in Orange County and, 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 and who they serve and how effective they are. But that could be one of the things that could be set up with kind of catalyst pre-development. The one thing I will at the bottom, again, note, and the state always has this language about, you know, you can't replace um, you can't replace certain dollars. So just know that it has to be kind of additive to the work. Uh, I, I don't know when this would really be an issue, but I feel like this is just language they have to use and make sure it's pretty clear that you're, you can't bump other dollars you're going to receive in order to kind of do this work. It has to be additive. So as we move on, kind of again, thinking about what are going to be our outcomes through this, uh, I communicated with, with some of you and you provided some thoughts, but I want to use this opportunity to get more feedback. I think we're going to do another survey in no way is it, it's not a vote or a motion, but just to get a sense again of what people are thinking about, what are outcomes. But I think broadly, if you take a step back, uh, the fundamental question is if we have some sort of outcomes or scoring guidelines, how much are they similar between implementation and catalyst? Should they be identical? Should they be somewhat similar? Should they be um, very different from each other? I think that's really the big question. So as staff, you know, are we writing two different frameworks, two different guidelines, two different scoring outcomes, um, or, or one, and we can communicate that, but then we would just put them in different buckets. So as I kind of go through here on the implementation grant side, I want to start out just reminding you, right, the top eight line strategies, and you'll see that they're numbered and they're numbered for a reason, um, but career pathways, apprenticeships, we have the wraparound services where we talk about childcare, um, uplifting communities, making sure that they're in they're involved in the development of budgets and, and strategies. Small business worker uh, ownership and entrepreneurship was one. Uh, housing was a big one. Uplifting community voices, green and emerging technology and innovation, and then climate resilient environment. Right, those were the top eight line strategies. So from a regional perspective, those are the things that this collaborative cared the most about. So. Um, in between, when I showed you a kind of a draft um, scoring rubric on at least the implementation side, you know, the state has a draft SFP out for um, for our native populations to to access. I mean, a carve out just for them on whether it's pre development or implementation. Um, and the state has used this language when it came to the pilot project that, that Walnut Daisy Farm uh, was awarded. Uh, but they used phrases like, "Well, what type of project is this? Is it an innovation ecosystem?" Is it entrepreneurship and access to capital? And I'll go back, is it infrastructure, community facility development? Is it social infrastructure or is it workforce development? So if I go back, you'll see the numbers you'll see here match the strategies we listed. I, this is a way of saying that every strategy that we mentioned one through eight is reflected here. So the state is saying it differently. They might be bucketing things differently, but every all eight match all five. So I would expect, and again, I'm, I'm, be, I'm trying to be, um, predictive here is that this language will show up. So this is when it comes to implementation and the state's deciding it, our projects will have to make these selections. But I think I just wanted to note that despite us not really looking at these categories, the strategies that all of you elevated seem to be or are reflected in these five topics. So I, I wanna kind of make that clear. Um, they also have language in that draft, draft SFP where again, given the timing, I, I just don't see how it's gonna be a dramatically different document when it comes to implementation, is the equity piece that we've all talked about, the climate piece, because I think if you see those other five categories, some people, some of those are, you know, there's a, I don't see where the language around climate is pretty clear, but in the SFP, they make it clear the project has to have, you know, match state climate goals, and there needs to be that job quality and access piece. So all the things that we've been talking about, it's reflected in that draft SFP. So I would expect it to show up also uh, in the implementation SFP for us whenever that comes out. And then, sorry, this might be hard to see, but this is straight the rubric. So hopefully, I mean, I hope that some of you had time to look at this, but this is how they're breaking down the point system and the things that they care about. Again, I, I just don't think it's going to change dramatically. Um, but here are the things that, that this is how they're scoring it. Here are the points that they're assigning it. It's out of a hundred points. So if we think about the projects on the least implementation side, we will approve projects, but if we want them to be stronger or in a better position to be funded than other regions, then you have to think about the state scoring rubric at the end of the day. So how much should our rubric reflect, reflect this rubric or how much should we change it knowing that if we do change it, it may reflect more regional goals, but it may disadvantage us when it comes to implementation. That's a trade-off that you as a collaborative have to think about. 
and again, this is more. So there's the job quality and access piece for, for 10 points. They talk about capacity and budget because, again, this is not pre-development implementation. You have to have the capacity to deliver. And again, I apologize, it's small. But the whole point is this is where the, I think the state's head's at when they think about how they're going to grade projects that we're, they're going to receive from every region. So with that, I have some more. Are there any questions about what was discussed? Like, just pause for questions at this moment. Thank you, Jesse. Let's turn to you all with any questions or comments based on what Jesse just delivered us. And you can drop it in the chat or come off mute. Si tienen preguntas sobre el contenido que Jesse acaba de compartir, uh, levanten la mano o pues con sus comentarios uh, en el chat. Um, I see a question from Tony. Tony, I asked that question yesterday to someone from the state. Um, they don't have any information to provide yet on that. So I just wanted to share that with you. And the question in the chat so that you all uh, hear it is, has the state said, has the state provided guidance on whether the regions will have a limited number of projects for implementation? So to Maria's point, um, that is to be determined. Um, a question from Marshall. If there is not a direct equity impact, is a proposed project automatically disapproved? Great question. And this is where um, I sorry, I hate to be like, I, I don't know the answer to that, because when the state released it, released kind of some draft guidance back in February, it made it seem as if there were thresholds that had to have been met in order to even be considered. Uh, but when you look at the scoring rubric here, um, it doesn't seem that way. It seems like you could just get zero, hypothetically get zero points in one of these categories and still move forward. Again, this is where I think as a region, we can provide that higher bar. Um, but this just makes it seem like you could hypothetically miss something. You would just not be scored very well. So I'm sure in some ways it wouldn't get through our process because it would be scored poorly if you're missing something dramatically. But in previous ones, it just seemed like there was, it must do these things. And then there were, um, bonus points if you went above and beyond and added other components. If you use this scoring rubric as a guide now, because this is the best information we have, I, I know I keep going back and forth, but in some ways it's hard to wait for the final thing because then we're rushed to try to get something through the finish line. So we, I'm trying to prepare us as best we can, but knowing that we have to be flexible. But if you look at this, it seems like to your point, you could just get, you would just get a bad score. And then therefore maybe you won't get funded, but you're not uh, preemptively disqualified. Tony, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so American Indian Chamber, we spent a little time looking at the, the tribal rubric. Um, I, I would say to the issue of e equity that to the extent that this was used for the tribal set aside, every single applicant would be serving a disinvested community. Um, and so, so that, so they didn't necessarily need to have like, who is the poorest tribe, who, which tribe is the least served. So some of the things that we might do if we were looking at an entire county um, and appropriately applying equity criteria um, in some of the meetings with the, the state had a couple open meetings, but that was actually discussed was that when you when you're when you've already limited, it is, you know, you don't want to have a gladiator fight of who is the most disinvested. Um, but I, I do think that Jesse's comment makes a lot of sense. We don't have a lot to go from. So this is a great model to try to be. But then, as Yosefa says, the equity piece needs to be applied, whether it's at the regional level or at the state. But I do think the state will say more. It's just this this funding is already at a targeted population. And, and then to that question real quick, because this is just that specific SFP, like you would expect that if you look at this equity line, it'll just be assured benefits to disinvested communities. But because this is specific to tribal community, they didn't they didn't use the broader definition. So I would that you would just note that that would be the word change here. So just to not confuse people, it wouldn't be like only the tribal community would would be the only one receiving these projects. This was just a disinvested communities, which we've defined Um Again, we wish you defined by income levels. Uh, and, and so that'll be the, and we have those maps. Great. Linda, go ahead. Jesse just said it. I mean, we've already, we've already done, we've laid down the research. We mm -hmm. know the disinvested communities, they've been identified. So that would be, uh, that would be our focus in that regard to meet the equity part of this equation. Correct? Correct. Yes. Right. Great, thank you. 
So anything else about, again, this is the best that we have in predicting what we're probably going to see in January. Um, and then it, we, we just have to be cognizant of that because ultimately that funding, the state will decide, right? We're the first layer, uh, while catalyst can be a lot more for the region to determine what those priorities are at what points we want to what points we want to have. So again, back to that broader philosophical question about how close or, or how far apart these two, um, how how far apart you two will decide what's what's impactful between implementation and catalyst. I just want to kind of bring that up. So I think this is for discussion. I think we'll send a survey out to get kind of everyone's opinion, but I kind of want people to maybe explain some rationales here. You know, maybe you can convince a few of your colleagues. So I think I'm going to leave this here. Maybe we'll take kind of the first round, right? So how similar should the rubrics or outcomes be? Um, so on an outcomes perspective, right? So if we care about workforce are we and we have apprenticeships, what's that number more or less that we think we would like to get through through this work, but leveraging other dollars? So is success, you know, 100 apprenticeships? Is success 1,000 apprenticeships that are funded through this work on this worker cooperative small business entrepreneurship? Is that you know, 50 businesses have been started. Is it the growth of some that already exists? Is it the creations of those that don't exist? These are the things that I think, you know, if you think about, we can think about outcomes um, and then you think about creating a rubric from those outcomes or do you create the rubric and then the projects will kind of determine kind of what those outcomes could be based on that rubric. So what should the outcomes be of this initiatives? Um, about the state rubric, what don't you like or don't like? Luis, I know you're one who made who, who sent me comments prior you know, for us, a disinvested community is a household making about ninety six to ninety thousand dollars. Is that too high? You know, should should we go lower because those are people who are um, obviously the most disinvested, or are we narrowing too much? Then, um, do we have in the state the equity was ten points, just like climate uh, and just like job quality and access? Should one of those be higher? Uh, so those are all things that what you might want to change around the state's rubric if we think about creating our own. Um, how much should we allow the implementation funding to dictate um, what we want to see? Tony brought up this comment, especially now because of budget cuts, these dollar amounts are much smaller. And really, you know, the money is might be in other state, um, other state grants that could be aligned with this work or federal dollars. So maybe just because it's the state implementation, how much do we want to allow that uh, for us to copy and paste? And does that hamstring us when it comes to other things we want to accomplish? And then if you feel like they shouldn't be similar, you know, please let me know again, what should be emphasized, de-emphasized, added or subtracted. So we'll start there with those set of questions. Again, more for discussion. We're not getting you to cast your vote yet. We'll get a survey because I'm sure there's going to be ranges here, but we wanted to open up the space for there to be dialogue amongst all of you because you're going to have to approve the final version. Thank you, Anna, Anna, you have your hand up. Go ahead, Anna. Thank you. Yeah, just to start thinking out loud, especially to that first question on what should the outcomes be of this initiative? And I know you you had asked Jesse and I haven't gotten back to you either, but um, I, when we think of the of the outcomes of um, uh, especially worker ownership work and, and business development, I, we, we like to look at some of the factors of quality of life improvement as opposed to numbers of businesses. So some of the factors that we look at are, is there an increase in wages? Is there um, an increase in uh, safety in the workplace? Is there an increase in um, a voice and decision-making of people? So what are all of the different impacts in the community members? as they grow their businesses. Um, so I, I, for starters, I would like to lead more towards some of these more quality of life um, mm -hmm. indicators that there is an improvement in disinvested communities, as opposed to being able to say there's a number of, you know, new businesses um, without without knowing that they have that, that difference that they make in the lives of people. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, that's to start on that question. Um, and I don't know, on the one hand, for for implementation, the, about having a different rubric or not for implementation versus catalyst. Um, on the one hand, earlier when folks were mentioning like, oh, it, rather than confusing people with the different applications and whatnot, it could be interesting to just have one. Um, but in the scoring part, maybe it's something that in the back end, um, it is something we want to look at differently for catalyst. Uh, catalyst projects are the ones we we you know we want to help get there mm -hmm. to to the phase where may, you know implementation maybe we're we're more um 
we, we need to see that they already are able to um, mm -hmm. make the project real. So I wonder if there's an opportunity to have like the the back end or you know the, that 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 the collaborative looks like be a little bit more tailored to each of the projects without like overwhelming the the public that wants to you know apply. Yeah. Um. So those are just some thoughts for yeah. for me for starters. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, I mean, I think you bring up the why I'm asking. Like, I don't think there's a right answer here, right? Like, the collaborative will determine what's best. Uh, but it's not as if it's it's clear cut. So that that's again, the I don't know is is totally fair because you are weighing, you know, both arguments are are legitimate, hundred percent. Anyone else? Discussion thoughts on at least the first set of questions. Just a comment in the chat from Tony confirming uh, her uh, preference for the the two programs having. Uh, different scoring criteria, different mm -hmm. scoring criteria. But other than that, any other comments or questions on on uh, these last couple of slides? Preguntas o comentarios sobre esas últimas dos um, uh, series de información que te ofreció Jesse sobre la criteria. Hey, Ish, this is Yosefa. Can Yosefa. you hear me okay? You can. Yeah, Definitely. I'm sorry. I had to jump in the car. Um, you, you know, just fine. Anna uh, made a good point and it, it brought a question up for me that do we need, will it be helpful for us to stay within status quo? So if we think about entrepreneurship, the traditional metrics are those businesses start survival rates, growth of revenue, retention and creation of jobs. That's just what our industry does. But to Anna's point, Will there be opportunity to expand how we uh, look at impact um, or would that be sort of counted against us because that's not how the state typically looks at uh, it, entrepreneurship? So uh, it, I, I know that's an unfair question to you, but it's just a comment that I thought I'd lift up based on what Anna said, uh, you know, status quo versus innovation and looking more deeply at what impact looks like around uh, something like entrepreneurship. So if I would just say like, if you and Anna can, can send me what those would be, and then again, we can try to put that together. And, and at some point, right, the, the collaborative, I mean, pretty soon, we'll make a decision on more concretely, what is it that we're gonna care about, uh, score and judge. Uh, so, you know, I think that could be included. And I think that debate can continue to happen before people kind of approve it. This is Kathy. I just wanted to mention too that I feel like um, there's some value in what you're going to be doing, which is putting out a kind of a a preliminary um, look at what these projects are gonna are gonna look like, and then the use of technology like AI can really help us narrow down after we hear the voices from our region into some themes that align with the state. So that's kind of the work that I do when I'm working with the big initiatives on my side. And I'm happy, to, I'm excited about using that strategy so that we actually are able to align everything and then make some decisions about whether or not the catalyst can align pretty well and succinctly with potentially the implementation funding. Um, I think so. I think once you get that data back from an interest perspective on what, what are these preliminary thoughts on projects, and then use that a little bit to guide our thinking um, on a potential rubric or rubrics and how much they align or disalign and don't align. And then the implementation funding and connection, all that can be answered a little bit better when we have some data. That's my opinion on that. Absolutely. And that's why we want to sh have that sweep now. So you'll see it at the next meeting. So it's a little bit of just to discuss a little bit before. I'm sure what you see might change uh, your opinions, maybe a little bit or, or affirm them. And then that's where like in the December subsequent, we can really finalize um, what the scoring rubric or criteria, or whatever language you want to use is. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Linda. Linda, go ahead. Yeah, a question and a comment, just reconfirming. This is California jobs first. Uh, was, right? But we, I, yeah. what I'm saying though, Jesse, is it's been it's been the understanding as we go along that this is about creating responsible, sustainable um, jobs in, intended to improve the overall quality of life for California's citizens, focusing on raising up disinvested communities, 
Okay. So if that is the is the the primary mission and the projects that are submitted are in alignment with our regional uh, targets, as well as the California Jobs First Priorities, which includes uh, equity, uh, climate sustainability, uh, you know, the quality, job quality, and so forth. All right, those are all required and mandatory overlays to get the highest scores. Mm -hmm. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Okay, so once again, it's not either or, and it's not, in my understanding, it's not choosing that, uh, you know, uh, equity has to be, now equity is part of the equation um, and it needs to be, it, it needs to be part of the equation uh, for this to be a competitive set of projects that we submit. For implementation, correct. That's correct, okay. So again, we're not revisiting when we talk about a rubric or how or the outcomes we want. The outcomes we want is, you know, would be that the, the projects that are submitted reflect the creation and sustaining of quality jobs that improve the quality of life and uh, and that meet all the other, um, you know, soft and hard you know, uh, infrastructure qualities that we have in the alignment factors. Yes, I, I was the last in person, unless, and I apologize if I misinterpreted, it sounded like people wanted more tangible numbers, which maybe, again, if, if people don't, we could, it could be a little bit more qualitative and value based, like you're suggesting, Linda. But there was a sense of there wanted to be, again, as I was kind of just throwing numbers out there, how many apprenticeships, how many jobs through this funding that we want to get to, but if I misinterpreted the statement, then I'm happy to, from an yeah, outcome no, perspective, again, it could be, yeah. again, about, it can, it, we, we can drop the numbers. No, I don't think you, Michael, I don't think you, also made a comment, but I, I was sorry. Jesse, I don't think you misinterpreted it at all, but what I'm saying is I'm still hearing mixed messages though. Um, you know, uh, what Anna's suggestion would be more qualitative. I do think it has to have both properties, qualitative okay. and quantitative. And I don't think we can, I mean, I reasonably, I don't think we can make that assessment in a vacuum. I don't think we can say, well, you know, we insist that this project create 1,000 jobs at this category um, without having seen what's going to be submitted, which might give us a much better, um, you know, a much better landscape from which to decide you know, for example, if a project is going to create five jobs and we have another project that also meets the rubric and all the state alignments and meets our qual and it's going to create 50 jobs, then. So that's what I'm saying, you know, until we until we see what's, what's yeah. submitted, I, I think yeah. it could be very difficult. No, absolutely. I think this is why the, the discussion I, I agree, because also. On the outcome side, like if you if you stretch it too far and all the projects added up, assuming we could fund all of them, don't even meet that goal, then we can't say that that's going to be an outcome, right? So you, is your point? You want to even see like what the summation of all these projects are are saying about job creation, business creation, climate mitigation, all those things as well. So, mm -hmm. I, but yeah, I, I completely agree. That's why I think we. This is why we're not making that decision today. But I wanted people to kind of let out what their thought process is as far as what's the right direction, because soon enough there will be there will be you know, significant decisions made on what is in, what is out, uh, what is it that we value or, or not value, what is it that we're going to prioritize over others? Because in the state, like I showed you some of that was just 10, 10, 10, all things being even, you know, is that the direction this region wants to go um, with implementation, but also with Catalyst? And yeah, we have a question from Anna really quick. I'll, I'll just read what Tony dropped in the chat as well. Uh, she offered that projects could also include enabling activities. Mm -hmm activities that enhance the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah. Anyway, Anna, the yeah. last one, and we'll go to the second half, just, just for everyone. Yeah, just to build upon, um, I think what Linda was saying, I think it'd be, it'll help, it'll help us then with the, the hmm. rubric to maybe have a sense of, okay, um, not, 
not that we put out requirements for your project needs to hit these numbers of jobs in order to be eligible, but maybe that we have on the rubric an understanding of, okay, um, what gets a higher score is actually those that can also uh, describe the impacts that they have on, you know, a, on all of those things that we that we that we understand are um you know for certain and required like equity and like impacts on quality of life um that we know you know what kind of number to provide because they demonstrate that they can meet them um okay. so i wonder if it has to do more on the on the scoring um yeah on the scoring uh, on how we end up scoring got it thank you and then so kind of moving into catalyst um kind of the question of how many rounds of funding should we have uh, because it's a two-year process? Uh, is the strategy going to be funding activities for lots of different projects? Or are we taking projects just in the idea phase and funding them once we select them, funding them all the way through so they're implementation ready? So it really like a lot of funding in sequence to a few projects. If we have a lot of quality projects, can we kind of essentially spread the money around a bit, move them up a little bit? Do we have a maximum and minimum amount of funding based on the ACE top line strategy? So on, a, on the pre-development side, it's like, well, oh, I guess, well, there's $9 million and there's eight strategies. So like a little bit over a million dollar per strategy. Are there some that we want to find more than less? Um, or just given the nature of that type of work, the activities just might be more expensive. And that kind of goes into also to the, to, to the last bullet point as well. You know, th through that list, and this is where... Sorry, let me go ahead and share a screen to another one. Let's see, where can we go here? Sorry, one moment. Where if you look at this list of things, and this was the comprehensive list that was provided by the state, um, you know, between the everything listed in one, two, and three, those activities can be more expensive or less. So I mean, they could be saying, "I want one pre-development activity, and two could be five times more expensive than one of the things listed in one." Although I'm just asking for one thing. So these are the things that you have to kind of think about the different dynamics here. So this is where in, uh, in uh, it says like strategic planning kind of um, environmental or infrastructure pre-development. And this is what kind of the capacity building is category three. Some of these things can just be more expensive. Uh, so if, if we don't, it's such like how much can we compare or how much should we be comparing apples to apples as much as we can, given that some things are gonna be more or less, or you can get three things done with the same amount of funding. Those are all the things that we have to think about as, as well. The one comment I will make as I go back to this one um, is, you know, I think with a place like Orange County, even though we haven't seen the projects yet, I think $9 million can go very quickly. If we think about all the different stakeholders that are out there that probably could receive funding. Um, so it wouldn't be an issue to get that money out. And the money, actually, I think the, the activity has to be executed itself by the deadline of two years from now, or a little bit more than two years from now. While if we take the, we're going to take a few projects, but step by step, give you all the money you need to be implementation ready, then we probably should be more like concerned or they have to prove that they can get everything done under the two years. I think one will be easier to meet the funding deadline. The other one, when you start selecting projects, you'll have to really be more considerate on can they get all this done in the two years. So just wanted to open up Catalyst funding. You know, We have the money now technically, but we still want to sweep the projects, I think, for all of you to see. But sooner rather than later, we can kind of get this money out. We can start making selections or all of you can make those selections and start getting money out the door making an, a more direct impact in the community. So anyone have thoughts around kind of those four topics around catalyst funding and how deployment should work? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm concerned about the greatest impact for the greatest good, mm -hmm. as opposed to 60 small projects. Yeah. Maybe there would be six that would have the greatest long-term sustainable impacts. We have a hand up uh, from Tony. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah. 
thought was maybe we could ask our groups that we had um, coalesced around and or maybe they're different groups to come up with a couple scenario projects mm -hmm. um, because these are really, really important questions and they're all and and they're all good. I mean, do you want to have the most amount of impact or do you want to have the most amount of grants? Linda raises a good question. Do you want to have small versus large? If the decision is small, you're going to want to have a different kind of TA than if you're saying I'm looking for large. So my thought was maybe we could come up with a couple uh, projects and try to run them through a scenarios mm -hmm. as, as a group, or maybe it's a work group, so not everybody has to be exhausted by it, so that we can really start to see there are trade-offs. You can't score something unless you're saying this is more important than that. And that's hard because we're probably going to see a lot of really good ideas. So that would be the suggestion maybe that we could put forward a couple scenarios and try to run through them to really differentiate these little, these, these pieces. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, sort of, uh, Tony, one of the, a, a bridge for that though, is again, it doesn't have to be either or, because perhaps the small projects could fit neatly into a larger project that's being submitted. So I'm just saying that when we when we take a look at what comes through, you know, in you know, for example, the kinds of things that I'm thinking about for Octane, um, I'm making long lists of potential collaborators and nonprofits and organizations that we want to be included in it. But not everyone may think of it in those terms when they submit. So that doesn't, that would fall to us. That we could look at that and say, you know what, that fits real neatly into that project that was submitted by, mm -hmm. you know, um, OCDE, for example. So if you wanted to do something like that, then you would design your whole program to say, we're going to have a preliminary letter of intent that would come in at this time so that a group of people that are good at project making would move the different applications into buckets. I mean, you just organize it different. That's all I'm saying is that, but you also would want to make that really transparent because there may be a group over here that has a great project, but didn't know that was an option. So they might not know that they should be getting the, those other collaboratives. So that that's why, I'm, I mean, I think that's how we, we got to tease out these really key elements. That's all. Yeah, uh, Gary has. Uh, yeah, Gary has. Gary. Oh. And this is probably the last one on this one because we want to get to the, the last slides in the last five minutes. Thank but, you. I, I, I understand what Linda's saying uh, regarding the greatest bang for the buck. Um, I serve on some other allocation committees of, of organ institutions, and we've all grappled with this issue. <clears throat> and in in several cases, what's what has worked is to have a an agreement that a percentage in this discussion about large projects versus small projects have a per agreed upon percentage of the funding. Mm -hmm would go to large and to go to small and kind of have two groups. Um, you know, you can have a, a thing of projects under $100,000, $200,000 and then projects greater. And obviously the smaller is a, is a smaller percentage of the money, but that way nobody gets excluded. And I think if we say, you know, go along and say, we just want the big projects, then why would anybody even even uh, apply for something that isn't a big project? So I think you've got to accommodate both. My other point is I briefly looked at the other sheet you showed up, the other page you had, mm -hmm. and under example with the four, yeah, the environmental infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> When you have the examples um, on number two, um, you mm -hmm. measure those projects in hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, you've got to use examples that are based in reality of how much money that we're going to have. That's yeah. just a comment. That, that's, and that's something I should tell them, well, I'll communicate to the state. I mean, it'll, mat it'll matter for this group. So great comment, but the state also needs to recognize that and maybe because th this was a holdover and at the time they had more money but right i, th I think that's the point here as i was mentioning so, uh, these these can be very 
yeah. very different projects that have different, very different dollar amounts. Um, and so something that this group needs to consider when you're kind of laying out the parameters. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So um, so let's just real quick, we'll go into the investment playbook because that was a quick question. We'll go to the survey. But again, it's, it's mostly just primarily a website, more so than a PDF book. Uh, the state will provide more guidance, but just if you haven't had a chance to look at the website, so San Bernardino through their work, they have six categories. You know, they kind of name theirs a little bit different, but I don't think any of these are really different than the eight that were mentioned, uh, but they kind of have it here. And I think if you scroll down a little bit more, you know exactly where the state got some of the rationale between a ready to go project, which is the implementation project, a last mile and exploratory. That's essentially the same language that's being used when it comes to this regional investment initiative. Um, and then if you kind of do click on one, so click on kind of entrepreneurship, it will load up which ones are the ready to go projects with their dollar amounts, which ones the exploratory projects within this category. And then it kind of explains the need, uh, what this will do, uh, what the objectives are. They have a, now they have a project PDF and then the costs. So this is just, I just want to show you, this is the best example we have so far from the state, but how things are moving, but this kind of gener this more a more clear narrative and story about here are the here are the projects we care about. We're going to move on trying to fund these things. I guess here are the projects we care about, why they're important for the region, and how much how much money we need to kind of get those done. So that's that briefly. The investment playbook, and I have a hyperlink, so please kick and look look at it at your leisure. And then project survey, I'll stop sharing here. We have two. We'll just give us two minutes for Maria to kind of show you that because we want to release it uh, or we will release it um, early next week. So Maria, if you could share screen, just show them the type of questions that are on there. We're happy to take some, if you have any recommendations on questions to send that, to send them to us now and very soon, because we do want to submit this next week to give people time to apply. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'll start from the top, which as I'm now sharing screen and looking at the survey, I'm like, okay, I see where I can make some improvements, right? We're trying to get some ideas as to um, what people are interested in proposing, what projects they, they are looking for, uh, funding for. Um, so here, I can improve that area, right? Uh, uh, include a description content for the survey. Um, so we start off with the name of the primary applicant, a brief description of applicant, uh, describe a summary of your project here, max a thousand characters, um, and then they can submit a Word doc in case they are interested in elaborating further. Um, where in Orange County will this project provide benefits so they can click on one city all cities um, any city and then we go to the next question if applicable where in orange county will this project be located um we then go to how would you define which stage your project is in um so implementation ready ready to go or pre-development um which option below best defines your project uh, innovation, ecosystem, entrepreneurship, infrastructure, social infrastructure, workforce development, um, and then which industry or industries, if any, would your project contribute to? And they're hyperlinked here, so they're able to click um, and read through this. And then I include some um, instructions, like for more information on each industry listed above, follow these steps. This way they know because this can be very overwhelming, right? We've talked about this before, this website can be overwhelming. So then they know how to search for um, the industry. So here's the instructions. And then we have the ambulatory healthcare services, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. And then review- yeah, I remember. The So those are the top, just so right, those are the top 10 priority industry sectors that this collaborative chose. So we wanna see, are they moving the needle in that direction? Just the rationale between the list, sorry, Marita. No, no, you're okay. Um, and then, so here they can click on that. Um, and then follow up, if they did select other, then there's a uh, option for a follow-up question. Um, so they can enter their characters here. Uh, which components, if any, does your project include? So career pathways, apprenticeships, um, a, you know, uplift community voices, uh, climate resilient environment, et cetera. There's options here. Um, will your project, uh, select all that apply. You can find that justice 40 disadvantaged census track might appear. So we try to hyperlink almost everything to make it easier for the person filling out the survey. So will your project be in a justice 40 disadvantaged census track, uh, provide direct, meaningful, assured benefits to at least 40% of residents? Um, 
And then I'll keep scrolling. Is the applicant a member of the Jobs First Collaborative? Yes or no. Um, how much funding do you anticipate requesting from this full pool of funds? And then lastly, what specific technical assistance do you need to advance this project? So this is where we'd love to take feedback. Um, Real quick, Murray, can you go up a little bit? But because, and I, I, again, we apologize for going a few minutes, but can you just show them the different options here? Because this is where I think we show the different items that again, we think are best. So in this, in the Willier project, can you just review briefly what each um, selection is, like what they can answer? Which section? Oh, right, well, your project, and then can you go over, can you review with them the answers? So so, so they're kind of self-reporting what they think their project will do. So B, right, it says B, a Justice 40, just can you go through every one of those options just so people are aware? Oh, yeah. So B and a Justice 40 dis disadvantaged. So you want me to read each one? Yeah, just so people know what we're trying to highlight in, in what we want to see in a project. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so being a justice for a disadvantaged census tract. Um, and so when they click here, um, it'll take them to the map and then uh, provide direct, meaningful and assured benefits to at least 40% of residents who live in a justice 40 disadvantaged census tract, um, have a household income under $95,000, um, include an applicant or co-applicant located in or serving disinvested community. A disinvested community is one located just as 40 census tract. So now I can see where we can improve some of the um, grammar. Uh, household income under 95,000. I know for a lot of our collaborative members, this is something that's really important. Um, create assets or programs owned or controlled by members of disinvested communities, aligned with med major state climate goals and policies, Promote the creation of family sustaining jobs with health healthcare and retirement benefits, career advancement opportunities, access to training, consistent scheduling, safe working conditions and opportunities for collective worker input and representation. This could include creating new high quality jobs, retaining existing high quality jobs or improving the quality of existing jobs, ensure equitable access to quality jobs for residents of disinvested communities, target training and support services to workers with employment barriers. And then the link can be found above. Unfortunately, um, the system doesn't allow me to, to um, hyperlink in within the section. Um, include local or targeted hire provisions, a project labor agreement, community workforce agreement, community benefits agreement, or labor peace and neutrality agreements. Fund alternative models of ownership for land, businesses, or other assets, worker-owned cooperatives, community land trusts, community investment funds, or others. Leverage assets, investments, or other funding sources. Be applying for or interested in applying for federal funds. That is a Justice 40 covered program. Um, and then the link to the full list is above. Has or had community input or approval and will continue to have opportunities for community input. So this is the section with, um, will your project be, and then, yeah. That's it's a it. lot. I'm Maria, did you do this? Yes, but not by myself. Dr. Wallard and Jesse helped. I put everything into the survey, um, but Jesse and Dr. Wallard, we all worked on language. <laughs> well, that's impressive. Yes. <laughs> all right, so um, we are... Ish, Ish, can, we use, can you adjourn anyone who wants to stay on can stay on for this topic yes. but just for the sake for people just two quick know. reminders so um as jesse mentioned earlier uh please send us any comments that you have on regional plan part two by november 22nd in time for an update on december 6th so and then december 6th will be our next uh collaborative meeting uh, it'll be done here virtually and uh calendar invite uh, should have been uh, sent out for that already you should have that on your calendar but November 22nd is the deadline to send uh, your comments on on regional plan part two and uh, yeah thank you for the extra six minutes uh, those of you who want to stick around and discuss a little bit more some of these details you're welcome to um, others of you have a great weekend Ish can I just ask real quick when does this sur when is this survey going to be ready and when is it going to be available so this survey is supposed to go out next week. Um, we're not sure yet if Thursday is the date. Um, Jesse and I are working on language. So we're going to send it out through a newsletter blast as well. I will make sure that I send it to all of you in our email um, recap email that I always send out after collaborative meetings. But we're also sending it out in a newsletter blast.
And is an organization prevented from submitting more than one? No, uh, and we'll make that, we can make that clear in the survey, but there's going to be, again, blast language that provides some context here, because right, for some groups, this might be the first time they're hearing about this, this, the whole initiative itself. So we'll make that clear with like a deadline to submit. And also, yeah, you're not prohibited from applying more than once if you have multiple projects, just you'll have to just submit multiple applications. Well, this was very well done. Thank you so much for this to be left here. Yeah. And again, we, we hope that this will also, I mean, that given the thoroughness, that's going to be really easy for the collaborative to pick apart, right, groupings of projects where people are really trying to make an impact. Any other kind of questions or comments? So what's the, what's the deadline to supply uh, comments to you about it? Uh, I know it's to be twice. If you could do by end of day Tuesday, Tony, I think we'd like to get this survey out Thursday, Friday of next week. Okay. And then... Um, are you going to be offering office hours or some things to people that um, would like to fill out the form? And if so, that should probably be in the um, okay in the document. Yeah. Okay. So like technical assistance on completing it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I will add that. So thank you. That's a phenomenal point. We'll add that to the, the blast language so people know there's going to be the opportunity. And then the other piece is that probably you need to, um, I would I'd suggest saying in multiple places, you know, this is not the application. This is a survey mm -hmm. to get ideas. You are not applying for money. Filling out this form does not mean that you get money. Gotcha. Um, because I, I think that particularly if this is the first time that you've seen it, you might go, wow, this is the best application for a grant that I've seen in a long time, mm -hmm. simply because you're you're not familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There, there, was, there was one mention, but we will do multiple. I get, yeah, totally. So multiple mentions, good, fee great feedback. And that's great to add, Tony, to the very top where um, the description content for survey too. Yeah. And thank you, Christina, if you have an opt off, that's yeah, maybe an, an easy way to do select all really quickly. Did Luis hop off? I know um, I, I'm catching up on the messages here. Yeah, it looks like he, no, he's still, still here. here. He's still here. I'm still here. Oh, oh, hola, Luis. Okay, so I was going to say, I mean, we don't have enough members on here to, um, I'll, I'll send this message um, in the email, but I know some of you um, arrive later and then end up in the attendee section. If that ever happens, please message me right away um, so I can transfer you over to panelist. Right. Jesse, Maria, any, any parting thoughts? No. I, I Thank you so much for the input. I'm already going to make some changes to this and some of the other things. So thank you for allowing us to think more comprehensively about this work. Right. Well, thank you. Gracias por el, los, el, los, los adicional 10 minutos y, y que pasen buen fin de semana. Thank you for the extra 10 minutes. Have a great weekend, and we will see you again on December 6th. And get your comments into both this process and regional plan part two uh, through follow-up emails. Thank you all.